Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we are in a new week and the month of October is running so fast. And the Lord has said this is a month of prayer. Now when he says the month of prayer, he's telling us what the Holy Ghost will be doing in us. Now I've been talking about this from the beginning of this month, explaining different aspects of prayer. And in our team, scripture has been from Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. Jesus told them a parable to illustrate the fact that men ought always to pray. Praise God. So we're going to be looking at another aspect of that today and, and looking at that this week. But before going to today's broadcast, can we Make demand for our daily bread. The Lord has commanded us to do this on this broadcast. So are you ready? Release your faith in agreement with me right now because a miracle is going to take place in your life. I believe it. Do you believe it? Join me right now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Man, praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, I want to show you something. Jesus told them that parable to illustrate the fact that as in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Jonah. Jonah chapter 2. Now, we faint because we don't pray. Now, he didn't say men ought always to pray so that they will not face challenges. You can't stop challenges from coming to you. I hope you know that. Now, that, that must be settled in your mind. You can't pray away challenges. You will surely face challenges whether you make a mistake or you're doing things perfectly, people will just rise up to because the world is even naturally, human beings are quite selfish. So you will surely get to a situation where someone will want to have his way that it's, it most likely will interfere with your path. See, you might be doing your own things right and then maybe you're working in, a, in an office and then you, you're just a righteous person. But it gets to a point where someone wants something and they want you to give the approval. And you know this is a wrong approval. But they've made up their mind. You are now the only obstacle involved. So sometimes people boldly come and tell you, you know what? I don't know what, don't give me that your church thing. You've got to do this thing for us. Even if you don't want the money, you've got to do it for us. That's how we do it here. <laughs> you see? Now you're on your own just being you trouble will come now there are people who will face you want to walk in righteousness you want to do you just want to do what is right and but then all around you are people who are just doing anyhow changing standards not being concerned about what you know i told you the other day even in church you see a lot of people that have no fear of god in their hearts now, these people walk in church, but you see, there are people who walk in church and they steal. There are people who walk in church and they deceive all manner of things going on. Now, because they don't have the fear of God in their heart, now, how do you cope working with such people? You would think, oh, out there in the world, this is what we deal with. Now, you come to church. Imagine you resigning from your, you know, when I say secular job, you know what I mean? You resign from your and say, I, I want to just serve God. I want to walk in church. So I'm good with administration. I'm good with finances. So um, I want to help the church, you know, to, you know. And then you get there and you receive the shock of your life. What? Even in church, you still have this thing stay in place. See? Now you, you want to be clean. You want to do things right. Trouble will always come. And most times you've had people like that who, a lot of people have really died of heart failure. Yeah, because so much disappointment and so much disappointment in people, in systems, in organizations. And they just get to that point in their life where, what's the point? What's the whole point? Guess what's happening to them? Their hearts are failing. Their hearts are fainting. Jesus said, and you look at this, but man, 
Don't, you see, I, I know what happened to that man. The challenge, the, 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 the system was just so... No. He died because he was not praying. No, Pastor, that man was a prayer one. No, I told you this earlier parts of this month. It's not just to oh, shakala, ba, 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 oh, father, oh, father. No. There is such a thing as engagement of your heart in prayer. You engage your heart in prayer. And listen, if you're talking to a God who hears prayers, then you should expect some result when you pray. You don't just pray, oh God, look at what they are doing. Oh, Father. And then tomorrow again, Father, I've come again. See, let's not be that I'm complaining too much, but these guys are just, oh God, oh God, oh God. You're not praying. You're complaining. Be careful when you change prayer to complaining. You know, that's why sometimes, even when we pray concerning things, situations, we don't see any kind of result because we're not really praying. We're just complaining. Oh God, look at our nation. Look at the bad leaders we have. Father, from since 1960, we've always had bad leaders. It's gone, it's gone from worst to worst. Lord, this thing cannot continue. Oh God, intervene. You were complaining. You were not praying. You're not praying. And then most times you see such folks after they finish, they say they just finished the prayer meeting now for praying for the nature, nation. And then they get out there, listen to the words that they speak. You know they never prayed. Ah, man, how is this country good, man? Ah, this country, will you ever get better? Eh? Can you imagine? In fact, do you know what I just said? Yeah, I just saw on social media. They've just approved one money like that. What? They, they want to steal that money. You just finished praying. Yeah, but that's what, what am I supposed to do now? Eh? These things are real. Oh, no, you don't. See, now, I, I, I said, turn your Bibles to Jonah chapter 2. I want to show you something. Now, you know the story about Jonah. You know, God sent him to um, Nineveh. But then, he felt in his heart. Now, you see, a lot of us have studied this and have accused Jonah. Said Jonah, a disobedient fellow who, who just... Did. No, Jonah actually understood what he was doing perfectly. He knew what he was doing. See, Jonah was very close to God. He knew God very well. I know what God said in Jeremiah. Let him that glory, glory in me, that he knows and he understands me. So Jonah, God sent him to Nineveh. It was the content of the message that made Jonah not want to go. Why? God said to Jonah, go to Nineveh and tell them that in three days, if they don't respond, if they don't repent, that he would, he would, um, sorry, I just want to get something clear. You know, he told them, all right, he said, in, in three days, if they don't repent, it's going to destroy the whole city. Now, Jonah knew that in that city, even if one person repents, God will change his mind about destroying the city because he understood that's how God is. He's full of mercy. If God can breathe out smoke and, and brimstone and, and in his heart and tell you, look, I will, I will. And then you, know, you just know that. <laughs> All this one is saying, somebody just say, hey, Lord, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. God said, mm, mm. you see how that fellow have repented. I won't do that to him again. He knew. Jonah knew. So Jonah felt God was sending him to go be a, the bad guy. So I'll go there and tell them, if you don't repent, God will burn down this city. And then they will repent and then no burning takes place. And then everybody will now look at him as in, are you sure this prophet was not just raising false alarm? That was Jonah's concern. Okay. So God said, go to Nineveh. He said, I'm not going. God said, you have to go. He said, I'm not going. In fact, he said, you know what I'm going to do? Let me leave here because it seems because I'm in this place, the word of God is coming to me. Have you felt that way before? Now, now, those of us that God have called to do something unique, there are times you just get to that point and say, Lord, can you just leave me alone? I'm tired. So if you're looking for what to do just to get God off your back. <laughs> so Jonah felt if I leave this place to a completely different location, God will be upset with me and he will not talk to me again. I think I'll prefer that. And what a place to be. <laughs> that you will not hear the voice of God. Don't even imagine it. So Jonah paid his fare and was on his way to Nineveh. God says, look at this guy. <laughs> he thinks he can run away. And God caused a storm. And then the people were like, we've never seen this kind of storm before. Something is wrong. Something is really going on. And they saw Jonah sleeping. They said, come, guy, why are you sleeping? 
And Jonah said, you know what? Let me just tell you guys, it's because of me, this whole thing is happening. Let's not beat about the bush. So what did you do? I'm running away from God. So, man, so because of we are going to die. So what do we do? It was Jonah that told them, if you throw me inside the water, the storm will cease. They looked at Jonah and said, man, we'll throw you. <laughs> Since we've known that problem, instead of everybody to die, it's better for one man to perish. See, that statement didn't start from the high priest when he said concerning Jesus. Jonah, the, the sailors, thought about it and said, look, for, instead of all of us to die, let this guy die. Now, Jonah knew that God was saving. He knew. Please understand this. So they carried Jonah and threw him inside the water. He didn't plead. He didn't say, please help me. Don't. Nah, look, we'll manage. We'll get to land. No. They threw him inside. And when they threw him, God sent that fish to swallow Jonah. Now, here's the point I was getting to. Jonah was in the belly of that fish. Now, you think it's going to be a... a a very deadly experience, okay? But then, in chapter 2, verse 1, the Bible says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's belly. Wow! In that agonizing situation, now, I can't explain to you what it felt like being in the belly of the fish or how big that fish was. I can't explain that to you. But then, remember I told you something about the Bible. Everything written in this book is true. So, Jonah was in the belly of the fish. Imagine the agonizing situation or agony he was going through. But then he remembered to pray. He remembered to pray. Many times people have been in such situations whereby it looks like life and death, like the only way it turns, I'll face death. Then they begin to figure out with their mind, what do I do? What do I do? Imagine being in that situation. Is there a place I can stab this fish that the fish will just get tired and go and throw me out? He say, wow, wow, look, I'm still alive. Okay. Now he was still alive. Imagine realizing that you, you your senses are still intact. <laughs> your, your mind is still intact. You you are still alive. I don't know if he could move his body or anything. And then he realized something. He said, look, forget everything that I've happened. I think it's time to pray. He wasn't trying to figure out things by himself. He said, look, I will pray. He didn't just say, I will pray. The Bible says, then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish's bed. And look at the content of the prayer. He says, I cried by reason of my affliction unto the Lord, and he heard me. I cried by reason of my affliction. So he was afflicted. He said, I cried by reason of my I'm in a tight situation. I'm in a terrible situation. But out of this affliction, I cried to the Lord, and he heard me. Out of the belly of hell cried I, and thou heardest my voice. Praise God. For thou hast cast me into the deep, in the midst of the sea, and the flood compassed me about. All thy billows and thy waves pass over me. Then I said, I am cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again towards the holy temple. When you pray, you must have hope in your heart. See, now, now he said here, I love what he said here. He said, then he said, verse 4 now, then he said, I am cast out of thy sight. Jonah said, he said, well, I've been cast out of your sight. Yet, this is the hope factor now, yet I will look again towards the holy temple. How did he know the direction of the holy temple in that belly of the fish? He says, I will. Now, the moment he said that, he was invoking the prayer and the blessing Solomon got from the Lord. You remember when Solomon dedicated the temple? He prayed a prayer. He says, no matter where any of us run to or where we are carried away as slaves, that if we will remember you and turn to face this temple, you will hear us from heaven 
and you will save us. And God agreed to it. When Solomon was dedicating the, te dedicating the temple, God agreed to it. God says, look, I, if anybody would, would cry, would look up towards this temple. And that's why you see sometimes you, you say pray facing Jerusalem. Now, when they say pray facing Jerusalem, they are saying pray facing the temple. But the bad thing now is the temple no longer exists. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah, it no longer exists. As long as that temple was there, that covenant God made with Solomon, it was a God and Solomon covenant. That, that covenant was standing, okay? So now Jonah invoked that covenant here. When you pray, let your prayer make spiritual sense. You must pray with understanding. That's why I told you, Jonah knew God. He knew how to trap God. He knew. So he says, I've been cast out of your sight, but then I know one thing, I'm going to look again towards the Holy Temple, okay? Okay. The waters compassed me about, even to the soul, and the depth closed me round about. The weed were, were wrapped about my head. I went down to the bottom of the mountain. The earth with her bars was about me forever. Yet has thou brought up my life from corruption, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came in unto thee into thy holy temple. They that observe lying vanity forsake their own mercy. Wow, this is big. In all this, it says, if you, if you are going to observe lying vanity, you're going to forsake the mercy that is available for you. They that observe lying vanity forsake their own mercy. How much, how many times you have been kicked off, even when you're praying sometimes, you're praying, oh God, then you hear that voice in you saying, are you sure this thing can happen? Are you sure God can change this situation? Are you sure? Look at it. See, this one died. This one died. The other one died. Are you sure? You start thinking, say, hey, oh God, oh God. You, are, you see, listen, you are observing line burns. This man, despite this situation, he found himself. He told himself, look, I will look towards your holy temple. I will pray and you will hear my voice. And then he says, those who observe life vanity, they forsake their own mercy. Hmm. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that that I have vowed. He remembered he still had an assignment to do on earth with God. He said, God, I have a vow that I made to you. I will still pay it. <laughs> I mean, you guys, this guy is going to die in the moment. But he says, no, Lord, there's a vow I made to you. See, I am Marco Sobre There's a lot to learn from this, but not, not, I don't want us to deviate from prayer now. Shakabala, brother, dear. He says, but I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that which that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Look at verse 10 now. And the Lord speak unto the fish. And he said, the Lord speak unto Jonah. The Lord speak unto the fish. So fish can hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. And he vomited out Jonah upon the dry ground. So this fish took Jonah, transported him from that deep sea. To the dry ground and vomited him. Why? Because the fish heard the voice of the Lord. Now, if anyone have ever told you that a fish can hear God, what would you think? Ah, oh, come on. We human beings have not finished hearing God. Zip fish. But this fish heard God. If anyone ever told you that money can hear God, if anyone ever told you that people who don't even know you can hear God concerning you, sickness can hear God. You understand what whatever situation you found yourself Peter was in prison those prison gates heard the voice of the Lord the Bible said when they were coming out the main gates opened of its own accord how do you think it opened it's not the angel that went to unlock it and open it the gate heard the voice of the Lord open and it, yes sir it, it, it didn't matter what lock it didn't matter how it was locked it opened the chains, everything gone. And Peter walked right into the city. Praise God. Oh, glory to God. Listen, you don't know what prayer can do if you will just calm down and pray. 
pray forgetting your worries cast all your cares upon him you see the things that make you distracted in prayer are your cares and your worries so what do you do with them cast them down i'm talking to the one who can solve this thing i'm talking to the one who can fix this thing and don't start complaining when you're praying pray and, and let god fill your heart with his wisdom there is an angle of the situation that you never that you will never ever imagine until the word of god comes to you yeah there is an angle of that situation that you will never be able to imagine until the word of God comes to you. And that's what you should be looking at, praise God. My time is up, praise God. Listen to me. Can you just pause? Take out your worries and just pray right now. Tell the Lord what you want. We don't understand you. And he will answer you. I pray for you right now. May the Lord fill your heart with wisdom right now. Let him bring to your mind an aspect of this situation you never thought of. And fill your heart with hope and faith. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.